Hello, in this quick video I'm going to answer a question from Valerie in South Africa. She wanted to know about her soil. How does she know what type she's got and what to do with it? So I'm going to play you an excerpt from my five minute plant expert course which shows you how to know what conditions a plant needs just by looking at its leaves and in that course there is a video on soil so here is an excerpt from that video. Okay let's look at some soil structure. Now what you need to do is find a patch of earth and just dig a hole. Dig down to about the spade's depth. Then what you want to do is examine inside the hole you've just dug and also have a look at the soil that's come out. Now I'm filming this in the winter and it's a bit damp this morning. So if we take a look down here and just feel the texture of it, it's quite crumbly and there's a few stones in it. Now if I squeeze this really tightly I can make it into a ball. So squeezing this into a ball you can see that um, it's not falling to pieces immediately so there's some clay content in this but if I just squeeze it a little bit notice how easily it all kind of falls to pieces and breaks down so although there is some clay content in here that's keeping the moisture there's not so much that it's sticking together um, like the clay you'd use for making a clay pot so this is actually considering this is the middle of winter this is actually pretty good draining so here is another soil, very different colour from the one we looked at in the last segment and it's very dry at the moment so I'm just going to dig down and see what this soil tells us. Now it's so dry here and the, there's lots of tree roots here, I'm certainly not going to be able to get round to a spade's depth so what I'm going to do is just fill in what I've dug so far with some water just so that I can do the dig and squeeze test but you can see it's a very light colour at the moment so we'll see what happens when we put the water on it but at the moment it's not looking like it's a nutritious soil at all. Now even though I tipped the water in a few minutes ago it's not going anywhere so this soil is really really compacted because with considering how dry it's been and this just not going down at all when it's this badly compacted you really need to either double dig it or better still get some machinery in that will get down um, with a blade to the subsoil and turn that over. But anyway, we'll have a play with the soil we've got. So actually it's falling to bits really quite well. It's just that it's compacted that means it's not free draining. So if this was properly cultivated, it would actually be a pretty decent soil because although it's lighter than the first one, you know, it's still got a reasonable colour to it. So a bit of organic matter and the right cultivation and this soil will be really good for most plants. So we've got another soil here. I don't know how well this is going to come through on the camera, but there's a slight reddish tinge to it. And that means usually that there's iron present in the soil. Now it is far too dry to do a dig and squeeze test, but um, I was right about the iron content. And if you can see the, the colour of some of this, you can see it's definitely got a high irony colour in there, lovely red. So I should put some water on this and then we'll see how well it drains. It looks pretty well draining judging by what's come out of the, the hole here. All right, let's give this a go. Now this seems to have a lot more clay in it than I initially thought because it's doesn't matter how hard I squeeze it, it really is staying together. Now this actually um, is being filmed in Spain and it's just as well they don't have much rain here because this type of soil, I don't know if you can see how sticky that is, really, really does retain the moisture. Nutrients. How do you know if your soil is nutritious? The answer is in the colour. Look at the following images and which looks the most nutritious and just guess. Is it soil A, soil B or soil C? So which did you choose? If you picked answer C, you are correct. 
The darker the soil, the more nutrient rich it tends to be. So what do you see in this photo? Yes, there are leaves and twigs, but to plants this is food, eventually. Old leaves get broken down into the soil and this supplies the plants with the nutrients they need. Now this is a typical healthy forest and you know there's not a bag of fertilizer inside. And the old leaves act as a mulch which keeps the weeds down and feeds the soil. Clever, huh? If you have a really poor soil and you want to be able to grow a wider range of plants, adding organic matter like manure or compost is much better than man-made fertilizers for improving the soil over the long term. Let's recap on what you've learned in this first video of the series. Plants need the right soil type, climate and aspect to be able to thrive. We focused on soil. Firstly, the pH is it acid or alkaline. You can tell by looking at which plants are already doing well in your neighborhood and also look out for signs of chlorosis in new leaves. That's the darker veins coming through. Then we looked at drainage. Is your soil dry or waterlogged? The dig and squeeze test on wet soils will show you how much clay content there is. If the soil holds together and doesn't easily fall apart when you squeeze it, it will hold water. And actually in the winter, it may even become waterlogged. And again, that will affect your plant choices. Three nutrients. Is your soil rich or poor? Looking at the colour of the soil will give you a good indication of its nutrient content. The darker the soil, the more nutrients it's likely to contain. You can't really change the pH of your soil. It will revert back over time. But you can improve drainage and nutrients by adding organic matter to the soil. So I would add to that excerpt that if you've got a really poorly draining soil that you do need to add some grit to it to help with that drainage and as much as I'm into no dig if you've got a very compacted soil initially you do need to get down and relieve that compaction because having air in the soil is a very important component. So as much as we all love our plants, the most critical thing to get right first is your design layout, because without a good design layout, it won't matter how wonderful your planting scheme is, you'll never have a really gorgeous garden. So if you'd like to learn more, I offer some free online garden design classes for small gardens, all size gardens and professionals. And in these classes, I walk you through the three foundational levels of garden design and the nine steps that it takes to create a gorgeous garden. So if you'd like to attend one of my classes just head on over to successfulgardendesigner.com forward slash free dash classes. So until next time take care bye bye.